walked in on you, uh, you was over in the transmission section looking like a transmission specialist. Yeah, she was over there doing her homework. That's what she does. Oh, you was doing your homework. Yeah. see that we're not in the honeycomb hideout today so today we are at Steve V's Automotives out here in Dendron correct El Dendron Elberon Elberon I'm sorry I went through Dendron Go sorry Elberon <laughs> Virginia you know what I'm saying he's the one that's uh doing a lot of work for uh for his team run it you know and we ha we got to get him on 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 a video because you know he does great work as y'all can see he got a lot of work around him and Another thing that we enjoy about Steve too, Steve also has his daughter fully involved into his business and that's uh, amazing to me. And I look up to him for that. I, uh, he inspired me every time I see uh, pictures of, uh, not little Danielle, Danielle, Miss Danielle online. You know, he inspires me and that's what keeps me going with Peanut. So let me stop talking and let me go ahead and let Steve get to talking. All right, well, I'm Steve. Steve Valencourt and this is Danielle and uh, obviously this is our this is our shop out here in uh, El Baron, Virginia and I specialize in nothing but 86 87 Grand Nationals and I've had a passion for these cars uh, since I was a little boy and I was born in a little town called Fitchburg Massachusetts and we had a uh, race car driver named Ron Bouchard and I grew up following him and he drove a not a Grand National but a Buick Regal and that's how my following for the actual Grand National came and I actually looked at the cars when they were new in the dealership with my dad a long time ago uh, back on Water Street which would have been 86-87 so I would have been about 10 and I've owned one of these cars since uh, 1998 and been working on them pretty much since then, but I didn't start working on them for other people until about 2005. And then in 2017, I had enough of a, a following that we decided to uh, leave the, the dealership scene and try this, and here we are seven years later. And as things grew, let's see, I think Danielle was probably Six or seven when I started the business, I used uh, my daddy daycare time to get her to do things for me. And as she grew up, uh, I let her do more things uh, other than take the trash out and sweep the floor. Um, now, I currently have her doing not all, but a lot of the engine teardowns. Uh, just recently trained her on transmission teardowns. Uh, she's been a heater core, uh, heater box uh, professional for a couple years now, and uh, my blasting person, and uh, lots of stuff going on there in the background that you don't see, uh, in addition to the, the normal um, stuff that needs to be done as far as like, maintenance and cleaning. Um, so that's a big help in the background. I've had various other people over the past seven years, but I just can't really find anybody that really works out so blood is uh, pretty pretty easy to do so she does well and let's see so we have been here since 2017 and I started out with about a 1200 square foot shop with two lifts and I didn't have any equipment and we started off the end of 2017 we bought a Bridgeport uh, that actually came down from Burlington, North Carolina where Richard Clark was he found it for me and I went and I bought it and I think uh, 
six months later, me and you went down to Georgia and we bought a uh, line bore machine. Yep. Rod, Gainesville, Georgia. Gainesville, Georgia. Yep. Uh, rod home and some other equipment. Um, and it's been game on since then. Uh, and the business basically exploded. And I've had, I mean, I've, you know, with the economy and all that, it hasn't really affected this at all. And I've actually gotten to, to the point where I can be um, somewhat selective uh, with what I take in. And we do everything from complete, you know, car redos, minus paint and body, to um, people mailing cam sensors and front timing covers, and sometimes some transmission pieces of that machine that I send out, and you know, a lot of engines, a lot of engines, a lot of transmissions. Um, but I hang my hat on on the attention to detail with uh, making everything look and run good, but especially the presentation, presentation because I appeal is my appeal. You know that's that's where I've been, and I also have a I have a pretty good background in transmissions. So transmissions of I kept the name as to be Stevie's Automotive, not Stevie's Turbo Buick, because I figured I would work on other vehicles, and that hasn't happened. <laughs> but there's always uh, going to be a if you need to fill a, a void, we can fill it in with some other type of make model or something that I I've, I've done in the past. Well, I noticed you had a GTO in here the last time I was here. Yep. Uh, I think it's a completed project now. It's, it's gone. Here. Yeah, the GTO, actually, uh, one of my customers, his, it was his dad's. So that's how it got in. So it was a, what was that, 64, 65 GTO, right? 65, yep. 389 tri-power. Cool. And it was supposed to be some, like, brakes and fuel system, and it turned into everything. Gotcha. Again, basically, restoration. Yeah. I see you got a ton of Power Master sitting over on the floor. Yeah, Power Masters, I'm trying to put a good one together. That's, gotcha. that, that's the problem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I need a Power Master motor. I had I got a Power Master motor that's leaking, and I'm trying to find one that's not leaking that, gotcha. that works. And that's gotcha. I used to do Power Masters. I don't do them anymore. Gotcha. Uh, now it's vacuum brakes uh, just because there's, there's not enough parts out there. I believe uh, Richard's still doing them, and he's got he's got plenty of cores. I don't have the cores. Who you say Richard? Richard Clark's, right? Yeah. yeah I don't, Richard I don't, Clark's Richard's garage. doing them. Well, Pete's doing them for Richard, but they're down under Richard, gotcha. Richard's name. And I don't have the courses they have, so therefore, I don't do Power Master. Yeah, I see. We do vacuum brakes. And we do, I mean, we do, I don't do everything in house. I mean, I still do have a couple different machine shops that I use. Um, but I do all my assembly, I do all my blueprinting, um, all the combinations, stuff like that, our spec here, all the, everything is measured when it comes back. And I put my name on it. And that, you know, once I decide that it's acceptable, then. Everybody else is, if there's an issue, it, it comes through me, it comes yeah, back to me. Um, you know, but we got, right now, I think I, I was, last week, the past couple weeks, I've been in transmissions, and I've got about five of those done, and i got four more to do before I'll be caught up. I'll probably never be caught up, but that's okay. And engines, I, we won't ever be caught up on those probably, but we're just slow. Well, i got through. one question for you, though. Do you, uh, do you, all, do you work on the hot air, like 84, 85s? I said I would. And okay. then I backed out real quick. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Just because they're not, I mean, other than the motor, they're the same. Yeah. But the motor is so different. I've worked on a couple. Gotcha. And they're just, they're different. Yeah. And, I mean, I'm not saying that if the business didn't warrant it down the road, I'm not saying I wouldn't, but right now, yes, I'll work on your hot air. You pull your engine and you ship it in and I'll put it, I'll, I'll rebuild yeah. it and I'll send it back to you and put it in. So I work on them, but I'm not doing any physical R and R of engines or major car work. I mean, like uh, you know, something like a transmission or a rear end. That's not a big deal. But yeah. um, the, the hot air stuff under the hood is. So right yeah, I hear that team running 86, 87. Yeah, 86, 87. Yeah. That's the ones everybody wants. That's the popular yeah. ones, and that's yeah. um, you know that's where I've been able to hang my hat. I mean, they're very popular right now, thanks to all the. What started with the Fast and the Furious. And, and then, yeah, I walked in on you. You was over in the transmission section looking like a transmission specialist. Yeah, she was over yeah. there doing her homework. That's what she does. Oh, you was doing your homework, school yeah. work. Okay. Usually, usually during the week, she may or may not do much during the week because of homework. Gotcha. Um, but school gets out in about a month, so then it will be game on for the summertime. She'll be out here with me every day. Gotcha. Uh, Monday through Friday. And, uh, She'll be doing Danielle, stuff. Steve's always posting your hard work, so don't think it goes uh, unnoticed. 
Well, it I doesn't put, go unnoticed. I put Danielle's name on the back of the sweatshirt, remember? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, yeah. It doesn't go unnoticed. And it's not, and it's not so that Danielle's obligated to take this business over. It's not that. Um, basically, her being a part of this, you know, the main reason is to give her, uh, teach her work ethic and responsibility and stuff like that. I mean, obviously... Uh, she's learned a lot about Buick. She's learned a lot about cars. Um, you know, she is quite artistic, yeah. so some of this stuff fits in with her. Um, she's the one who does the nasty painting under of cars on the floor pans. Yeah, I, I noticed that you do a I good job with the under that. with the underbody. You do yeah. a great job. I'm that's, not even gonna lie. That's labor intensive. So I know it is, it's, and it's, it's tedious. It's tedious. It's labor intensive, and it's good that I have her to do it. Otherwise, it wouldn't happen. I mean, we we still do the uh, detailed under the engine bays. Um, involved in that but anything under the car usually she does or we'll do she'll do like 80 percent of it and i might help it with 20 percent of it yeah um, gotcha. that's just a lot of that's restoration work and that's where i'm like you know i don't do body and paint and i don't do i'm shying away from t-top rust work i'm shying away from any rust work honestly if i can help it i'm, I'm trying to avoid that yeah gotcha. uh, in the seven it's time years, consuming well the seven years that i've been here i've had nothing but problems with those cars yeah, and it's not been it's not been a, a customer problem. It's just been a project, and you know I'm not a body shop and I'm not a restorative. I mean, there, yes, I do a lot of restorative work, but I don't do the. Uh, I started the business off with the frame off. You were I yep, remember I that remember one, that black that black one, I and that was that. a lot of rust repair and that that I didn't want to get into. But I, I got into it, I handled it, but I haven't got into that since then. Um, I got pretty deep into a T-top repair last year, and I probably won't be doing one of those. Well, one question I got for you, Steve, is uh, where has your farthest customer been? I know you had a customer from California, a customer yep. from Canada, yep. if I remember, and customer from Florida. We've we've covered the whole country. I mean, the whole country, Texas, Florida. Uh, that's good. A couple of them in California. Oh, what's that? California. Yeah. Yeah. A couple of them in California. Okay. And I have one I think in Oregon. One in like Carolina, North Carolina. Yeah, well, I mean, the East Coast is, you know, yeah. that's, that's easy, but most of them are, yeah, most of them are, there's a lot of them from the Northeast. I mean, there's a lot of cars in the Northeast, you know, New England, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, that particular part. There's a, there's a lot of cars up there, I get a lot of those customers. Well, uh, let Team Run It know, how many Turbo Buicks do you own, personally? I own five. See? For now. Gotcha. We're, we're going to thin the herd. <laughs> oh, really? Uh, once we... Uh, once we get things here where I want it, right? If that ever happens, I'm, I've got a couple of them that are going to get. They're we're going to get that. They're we're going to get rid of them. Cause okay. Just, you know, and then they're not nice cars. So they're going to be nice cars when we leave here. So gotcha. we're going to we're going to work hey, through them and, and squish them. Y'all hear that team running? He gonna have something for sale. Yeah. So man, I'm, I'm gonna be posting them for him. Whenever you not, put them up for sale, y'all hear it from me. May not be anytime soon. <laughs> All right. It's got. It's but, one but of those still, things. It, it, it's projected. It's projected. Yeah. Correct. Not my cream puff cars, but I don't need five. Gotcha, you know, gotcha. three, two or three. Is well, I have to do. Well, I have to ask you because I have people always asking me, do I, do I know anybody that got one for sale? So I'm like, oh, I get it all. The time. Know, yeah, same here. Yeah, and I'm like, well, I'm not. I'm not. What's my car worth? And I was like, well, perfectly honest, if you bring a car to me, you're gonna land up upside down and then when you're done with me. Yeah. You know, unless you got it for for free or for inheritance or something, uh, parts are really expensive. Labor, I'm not cheap. Uh, you know, it's they're really expensive. Everything has tracked with the times. Um, you know, building even a stock engine, I mean, they're, they're really expensive, you know, even in a stroker motor, give it up. I mean, you're 15, 20K for a, a seriously built engine, and you're you're, over, you're past 5K for a, a stock rebuild. It's just a sign of the times. Parts are expensive. Yeah. Um, you know, and things don't ever get. I, I agree with that statement because there's a couple of hood pads. Mm -hmm. I wish I would have jumped on them five, six years ago. Yep. Now, if you do find one, they're mad expensive. Yep. And they're hard to find. And a lot of them are fakes. Yeah. A lot of them are fakes. I mean, they look good. They don't look good. They look good, but, but they're fakes. I should have jumped on it, man, a long time ago. But, but you know, the hood pads are just amazing to me. And that's, uh, and that's another thing with these cars is, you know, the 86, 87s have the aftermarket, you know, re reproduction parts. Mm -hmm. The hot airs don't. So that's another reason I don't want to mess with the hot yeah. airs. Um, you know, but they, you know, the sheet metal... Almost all the sheet metal is almost available. I think they're working on the front, uh, the front fenders. That's what I was told. Um, you know, obviously we don't have, you know, stock cranks, stock blocks. Those are gone. But 
Um, you know, we do have aftermarket blocks. We got we got TA makes in the block right now. Uh, hopefully, uh, iron one's going to come from Champion someday. That would be nice. Um, so, you know, we do have a lot of parts. Hey, are we still uh, hurting on camshafts? Right now, no. Right okay. now, right now, uh, I've got a bunch of them over there, and I know a couple of other people that I deal with. They've got them too. I don't know. I don't know where comp sits on cores, but we're not hurting on camshafts, and I've seen the lead time come down on custom pistons. Okay. Um, so that's a good thing. Although, you know, prices cams used to be 350 bucks. You know, they're almost not quite double that, but they're they've gone up. Um, so. All right, well, Team Running, we're going to go ahead and end this video, but we're going to be back to Steve's location uh, to do more uh, technical stuff. We're gonna, we gonna we want to get into the technicals with Steve. And give a shout-out to your YouTube channel, please. Oh, my YouTube channel is Stevie Automotive. At, or Stevie Automotive. Steve. Stevie yep. Automotive, yeah. Yep. And uh, my Facebook is Stevie Automotive, and my Instagram is Stevie Automotive. Okay, I have everything at the bottom of the screen, yep. uh, his information. Please check check him out. You know, uh you know, subscribe to his channel if you're trying to get some of that uh, good Turbo Buick tech, technical. Yeah, it's technical in nature. It's not yeah. really. It's, it's not. really technical in yeah, nature. Technical nature. I want to just come back and just, you know, a couple of videos of you doing transmission rebuild or something, you know, something of that mm -hmm. nature or you're balancing a crank or you yep. you doing something of that nature. So we'll be back team running and we're going to uh, go ahead and end the video. I got Peanut here with me. Go ahead, Peanut. Go in the front. They don't think you're here. Go, come on, Peanut. Go out front. Say go hi. out front. Say hello. Wait. Say hi. No, come, 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 come in the middle. Come in the middle. I, uh, I, Peanut I, trying to be shy, y'all. Danielle used to be his size. Yeah, uh, they grow up. Yeah, they grow fast. <laughs> they grow man. up. They grow they, like seven, weeds. Seven years ago, she was his size. <laughs> yep. So, so we're gonna go ahead and end the video. I appreciate Steve V Automotive for taking time out of his busy day for giving us this interview, and um, and I want to post it because you do a lot of amazing work here. Thank you. He's actually my engine builder for the new TA motor. You know, I want to put Back that there. <laughs> yeah, it's right there. You know, it's right behind There's him. There's some parts scattered behind uh, me too. Yeah, and we're just waiting on a couple of more items. Uh, uh, we're gonna be, uh, you know, we patient with it. We have no choice really in the matter, and we're gonna be patient with it. He's gonna get it together for us, and we're gonna have uh, Looney's running again, right, yeah. Peanut? Right, right. Peanut. Yeah, yeah. Looney's Peanut. is coming back in 25. Yep, in 2025, that's projected. So, yep. also, I want to get some um, some footage of him messing with the TA block too. You know, yep. so we're gonna be here more often, uh, getting that footage and letting y'all see what Steve does because I feel like a lot of your stuff go unnoticed. Yeah, and I don't. And I'm here to help you. Well, I don't share like I used to on the groups. I, mean, gotcha. I put it on my channel, and that's good. It. When I was doing this, I did it across seven or eight groups at night. Gotcha. And I don't do that anymore. Yeah, it hasn't. It hasn't done anything. It hasn't hurt my business. Well, we going to come back so. because you do a lot of stuff, and I need to learn from you. Uh, I'm always happy to teach because people yeah. taught me. So, hey, you know, I'm I, I want to learn from you and yeah. just come back and. Uh, because uh, I'm passionate about these cars just like you. So. Oh, I know you are. You're very passionate about them. <laughs> All right, Team Run It. We're going to go ahead and end the video. Uh, thank you, Stevie Automotive. Thank, thank you, you, Steve. Thank you, Danielle, for your time. All right, Team Run It. We out. <laughs>